Let's plant some tomatoes. Welcome to Daddy Kurt's farm. Before we plant the tomatoes, we're gonna play mad scientist. The only additive that I ever put in the tomato planting hole is the eggshell calcium that has been treated with white vinegar. You can go back to some of my other videos about this process to get a better idea of what's going on here. Now that my calcium is ready, let's go get some compost. You may have noticed that my garden is not perfectly tidy. I got things in all stages. I got buckets and potted trees and propagated trees and winter garden holdover. Where am I gonna plant these tomatoes? That's a question I've been asking myself for the last couple weeks. One of the reasons I've delayed getting them in the ground. I think I came up with a plan. I'm gonna show you the varieties I have and where I'm gonna place them. My tomato starts are suffering just a little bit. I've waited too long to get them in the ground. I think they're gonna be okay. Let me show you what varieties I have and then we'll discuss the strategy for where they're gonna get planted. First of all, I have a brown terracotta. I actually have two brown terracotta. These were started from seed from a local person and I bought them for $1.50 each. Quite the bargain, I would say. I also have one patio tomato. This again was grown by that same person. And then in this are two plants that are the yellow pear. I'm gonna divide these two yellow pear out of this pot and plant them as two individual plants. The rest of these I started from seed. I thought they were all the German pink tomato, but these two on the end have different leaves. So I'm thinking they are uh, more of a paste tomato, like maybe the Amish paste or some other variety. The seeds that I had may have gotten mixed up. This is the bed where I did my onions this year. The onions grew up and produced a lot of greens, but they didn't do a whole lot of bulbing up. I'm gonna leave them in the ground for a while and see if they ever develop a bulb. But in the meantime, I'm also going to remove a few of them and plant the brown terracotta tomatoes right in the middle of this. I grew tomatoes in this bed last year and for that, I had put these two stakes, one on each end of the bed. I'll be using these as a system for trellising up the tomatoes this year. Now right now, I don't need to put any string or wire on it because the plants are small, but as they grow, I'll be adding string, rope, or wire, or something across these two poles to help trellis up these tomatoes. Right in line with these two poles, I'm gonna only put two tomatoes in this bed this year. So right about here, I'm gonna pull out some onions. You can see that they haven't done anything yet, except produce really nice roots and a whole lot of greens. I'll go ahead and use these when I cook, but I gotta make way in here, so we're gonna pull that many out. I'm gonna take some soil, my planting hole here. I'm gonna take the soil out of my planting hole and put it in the bucket so I can put some back, but I'm not throwing it up all over my onions. My method of planting tomatoes is to start with a deep hole. I like to plant the tomato deep and then fill it in as it grows up. The tomato stem will produce more roots as it gets covered by soil. In the bottom of the hole, I'm just gonna throw in some of my calcium mix, some of my own compost, and I'm just gonna mix that up with my hand. You can plant in these peat pots and they are supposed to degrade. I've done that before. There's already some roots coming through. So the plant may be okay. But I have noticed when I've gardened over several seasons that these peat pots do not always completely degrade. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel this off. That'll give those roots a nice open area to start working through the soil that's in here. And I'm gonna pluck the bottom leaves off. And I'm just gonna lean it over so that that plant is facing straight up. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill this hole up because I have enough plant, it's tall enough to come above that soil level. 
Let me put a good amount of compost down in the bottom of the hole. And then I'm going to put the soil that came out of the hole right back on top. I'm gently pressing on the soil. I'm not mashing it in. I just want to make sure that plant is nice and secure. Now on down the line here, we're just going to remove some more onions and plant a second tomato right here. This one I'm going to do just like the first one. Now that I've shown you how I'm planting, let's discuss the strategy of where I'm planting some of the other tomatoes. This is the one garden bed that I kept through the winter. And I had kale and beets and kohlrabi and peas and carrots and a number of things in here that I uh, grew through the winter and ate over the winter. It's mostly done. I'm going to be taking most of this out in the next coming weeks. But I have room right here for one tomato to grow up on this trellis. So that's where the patio tomato is going to live. Last fall, this is the garden bed that I put the chicken manure and the hay mulch on. That mulch was consumed very fast. So it looks like a bare garden bed, but uh, really the soil in here is probably better than most any of the beds that I have. Come for a close up and I'll show you what the soil looks like as we dig down. The bed that we just came from where we planted the other two tomatoes, the soil was still kind of hard. This one, I want you to notice how easy the shovel goes in and how loose that soil is. I think I'm going to go ahead and put six tomatoes across this bed right here. That's a little tight, but this bed is very rich and I think it can handle it. While I was digging one of these holes, I found one of these little cloth pouches. This was a seed starting pouch. It comes full of a compressed peat and you make it wet and you plant your seed in there. And the theory is that you just plant that in the ground and it worked, but this is proof that it takes a long time for that cloth to break down in the soil. I'll probably put another trellis up here just like I did with the others with the poles on the ends. But until I can make that happen, I'm going to protect these plants or help protect these plants from the cats. Cats love big, wide open, empty garden beds. So I'm going to just surround them with these cheap tomato cages until I can make something better. I don't want to leave the soil bare for very long. I want to get it covered. In years past, I've used some sort of a wood mulch. Everywhere that I've used leaf mulch, the soil just looks beautiful. So I'm going to try. I've never used leaf mulch during a growing season. So far, I've only used leaf as sort of an in-between season to help condition the soil. But I'm going to try that in this garden bed around these six tomato plants. I have bags of live oak leaves from a friend who lives in a neighborhood, and they clean them up and bag them. Now this is the asparagus bed. I have a little bit of asparagus on this end. I got some peppers and beets still growing on the end. Right here in the middle, I think I'm going to put these two yellow pears. These two tomatoes that grew up in the same pot, I'm going to try to separate them in water so that it's a little less traumatic to those roots. So I'm just going to pull that peat pot off and lower these down in here and gently massage those roots apart. Most of that soil is falling off and it comes off in two separate root balls. 
I changed my mind on one of the tomatoes. I said I was going to put three down in that hot pepper bed, but I didn't like the spacing, so I'm only going to do two down there, and I'm going to put one on the end of this hot pepper bed. I have four left. That means three of them. I'm not sure. I'll figure that out later. I put these cages over the tops of these two tomatoes in this bed and I'm going to tie them together just to help so that they can give each other some support. I want to thank you so much for joining me here on my journey in the Daddy Curbs garden. If you will subscribe, like, and share this video, that would mean a lot to me. You are what makes this journey a lot of fun for me. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you soon. Going? Yep.